Hello everyone, my name is Escape Salazar and I've decided to make a video on how to pour a ceramic slip into a mold. Um, the reason why is because I just recently am diving into pottery and ceramics and I realized that <laughs> there's hardly any good videos out there that specifically show you what to do and what not to do when you are pouring your ceramic slip. Rule number one, you have to know exactly what kind of slip you're working with. There is earthenware slip and there is stoneware slip and I'm not even going to go into all the different colors and variations that there are, but um, I went to my nearest um, ceramic studio supply store and I happened to get whatever they had on hand and I didn't have a clue what kind of clay it was i had to look at the box and type in the description so my box says robin red and this is the number that i'm looking at um ns3 and it's very important to um google the rest of um company that makes this slip is called miller slip so they do have a website so when i went on there i automatically found out this rest, um, this cl the clay is what I was working with and it had the description on the website. And that's when I found out that I am working with a terracotta earthenware clay. And online it says that the instructions are to bisque fire it to cone 02 or cone 03. And I have to ask more questions because I'm almost sure that I will have to fire it again at cone 04 or cone 05, but um, people are really friendly around here and if you have a question, um, people with experience will answer your question. So really quick, I'm just going to show you what my slip looks like. And it looks red just like it says on the box. You want to make sure that you mix your slip really well. Um, I got this attachment at my local hardware store and this was available so I picked that up and um, I put my clay slip in, well I upcycled a, a container that used to have a uh, protein powder in it and it works really well because it's about um, the size of a gallon some people like to put it put their slip through a strainer this is like a handheld one that you can find at the dollar store that's fine um i should strain it but i don't because i just look at it and if there looks to be no lumps and you know it's just a cup it's not like a a small mold that would be different you know like because the smaller the hole um, the easier it is to clog up your uh, your mold with slip so that's why you want to make sure that there's no lumps in there so once I have this nice and smooth it's time for me to pour it um, <clears throat> this is just a, a, a um, cup mold and I just put a resistance band around it uh, resistance bands uh, you can find like uh, like a sporting goods store or maybe perhaps a Walmart but this works really well and if you don't think that it's tight enough I just like to get a get a small square piece of wood and what I do is I just kind of wedge it in here make it more tight time to pour so here you can see that 
I still have about yay much to fill up to the top of this mold with a slip. And you normally want to go about like an inch over what you're required to because what happens is that the longer your slip sits in the mold, it will start to suck it in and you will see the walls around your mold thicken. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little bit more in there. So I mixed some more. I mean, <clears throat> I went ahead and I mixed this some more. Now I'm gonna pour it in. See how I go just a little bit over the top and that should be good enough. Um, I typically let this sit, well instructions say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, but uh, playing around with this, I didn't think that 15 minutes was enough to let this sit. So my time right now says about 4.30. So I will check it in another 15 minutes and if it's not thick enough, uh, I will let it sit for another five minutes. So about my judgment is about 20 minutes max to get a cup that is thick enough because if it is too thin, then when you try to take it out of the mold, uh, it will be very brittle and very easy for, for it to split in half, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my mold and very carefully tilt it over this um, container that I have on hand and pour it back in there. And you definitely want to let it um, sit upside down just because um, at, at uh, the, the very end of your mold, it is still very wet and it's dripping. Like if I were to, <clears throat> if I were to just let this sit, um, it could become noticeably thicker at the bottom of the cup. So I'm just gonna hold it like that for, I'd say maybe like a couple minutes and look into the cup. And if I see that all of the liquid drained out of there, then I'll just take this off and let it sit right side up. Um, this will take about four to five hours, my opinion, before it's safe enough to uh, take out of the mold. Um, the, the way I do it is that I take it off and if I see or feel that it's still very wet. Um, I would let it sit there for another hour just because you do not want to take a really soggy or wet um, cup out of your mold because it's not dry enough yet and it's really easy to deform it when you touch it with your fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna take a peek in here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, there is like an unevenness at the very bottom. Um, I think that's probably from the little, uh, the little chunks that I didn't, that I didn't um, take out. I should have used this guy. So I wouldn't have those, uh, those lumps in there, but, uh, I don't really think it's going to be that big of a deal. I mean, I could I could just probably sand it or smooth it out with a with a sponge if I if I wanted to um have that evenness back in the cup. So I don't see any liquid um pooling at the bottom, so I'm just going to go ahead and let this sit for I'd say another four hours and I'll come back to it and check on it, see if it's ready to take out of the mold. All right, let's see what we got. Ready to take this out of the mold. Um, I let it sit for another hour because when I put my hand in here, it was still kind of tacky and I want my fingers to not stick 
um, when I reach inside here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the block of wood and the resistance band. And slowly, I like to lay it down like this. <clears throat> Very carefully lift it up. It always makes me a little nervous, even though I've already done it a few times. Pretty wedged on there. Oop. Oop. All right, let's see. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. When you touch it, you don't want it to be like caving in because then, then that means uh, you're in trouble and any hard jabs at it or nicking it, it can just like make it cave in or it can like punch a hole in it or even crack it, worst case scenario. Gonna turn it up like this. See, it's kind of gonna be kind of stuck on there. So I just kind of reach in with my thumb, see if it can come out. If it doesn't come out on its own, I would let it sit for another hour, come back and try to gently lift it out. But around here, you can see the bleeds. Um, that could also be a reason why it's still stuck to the plaster mold. So I like to use, uh, actually I shouldn't even be using this tool because metal can easily scratch and damage plaster molds. So, um, this is just a skewer stick. It's not really sharp. Anything made out of wood or plastic um, can work for this. Find what I need. I'm just gonna go ahead and try this. Oops. Oh, so easy to gouge it. not coming out so I really should listen to my instincts and wait or else if I am too rough with this when I try to like force it out it's just gonna end up breaking off in my hand and I don't want to do that because I've been waiting for five hours for this to get to this stage um, sometimes depending on the condition of your plaster mold because mine was a used one sometimes there's like really thin fine hairlines and um, it's an easy fix because you just get a brush and you, d you dip it in a little bit of water that has some of that, um, it has to be the same slip that you're working with though. It's kind of like slowly feather the crack back in, kind of gently stroke it with my finger. I really don't have to do anything to this right now, but I'll just let it hang out for another hour.
so after you're finished trimming your piece you should have something that looks like this as a finished result i use 220 grit sandpaper to finish sanding my mug